Hello, I'm Mike Collins. This is English Bayou in the Pearl River Swamp in southeastern Louisiana. I'm going to talk a little bit about the ivory-billed woodpecker. This is an amazing bird that has been uh, feared extinct only to be rediscovered several times during the past hundred years. The, there's a lot of information out there on this bird in print and online. The vast majority of it is written by people who have never seen this bird and they try to make comparisons with other birds and a lot of the information out there is just nonsense. Um, if you want to know the facts about this bird, there are three really, uh, the three best sources would be two groups of ornithologists who had series of sightings of these birds. Uh, John Fitzpatrick and his colleagues had a series of sightings in the big woods of Arkansas. This was announced in a big paper that was featured on the cover of Science in 2005. The following year, Jeff Hill and his colleagues published uh, reported a, a series of sightings in the Chockahatchee River in Florida. John Fitzpatrick and Jeff Hill have incredible resumes and achievements as ornithologists and they're absolutely first-rate individuals, highest character. They were both very helpful to me in my work here in the Pearl River Along this bayou, in 2006 and 2008, I had nine sightings of the ivory-billed woodpecker and obtained two videos during two of the encounters. I also visited Hill's site where he had a sighting and obtained another video during an encounter with a pair of ivory-billed woodpeckers. These birds are, uh, they have, it's a large bird with very distinctive uh, uh, field marks, very prominent white patches on the trailing edges of the dorsal surfaces of the wings and other field marks, Dor two white stripes on the back. It's an unmistakable bird and its behaviors are also part of the reason that it's unmistakable. It's documented in the literature that this bird has really remarkable flights and it also has double knocks and uh, these calls, a Kent call as they're called, which is very different from the other large woodpecker, the, the pileated woodpecker of the southeast of the uh, swamp forest here. And so it's inconceivable that uh, a series of sightings, of mistaken sightings, could have been made in Arkansas by uh, a, Fitzpatrick put together a team of very skilled naturalists who were, they, they knew what they were doing, they were very well prepared, and uh, it's just not conceivable that they could have had a series of mistaken identifications of such a bird. And so uh, Hill and myself, we were both uh, uh, confident in, you know, we had faith in the, in the sightings that reported there. We realized that you just could not dismiss those reports as errors. And so um, we both then started looking for these birds in other areas, Hill and the Chalkahatchee River in Florida and myself here in the Pearl River. And then we had a series of sightings. So if you want to try to determine whether you want to believe these birds still exist, first thing to do is to consider the fact that these two independent teams of ornithologists, including Hill himself, had a series of sightings, several different observers having sightings. And then, so that's the first thing to consider. The other thing to consider is I was very fortunate during my work here, I stumbled upon a pair of ivory-billed woodpeckers here and obtained two videos that have stronger evidence than anything else that's been obtained during the past several decades. These uh, videos are discussed in detail in other lectures and in papers that you can, uh, there are links to all this information at my website, fishcrow.com. 
And I was also very fortunate that Hill invited me to visit his study area in Florida where I had another sighting of a pair. That was, I had a total of 10 sightings of these birds. And uh, during that uh, encounter, which lasted for about 20 minutes, the birds were far off in the distance, repeatedly making uh, flights, dramatic swooping flights, which were consistent with historical accounts. And I obtained a video with several events in that video. There was a film obtained in, the 19, in 1935, but there are no flights in that film. All we had were historical accounts. For example, Audubon described the flight of this bird as graceful in the extreme, and Eckleberry described a landing with a magnificent upward swoop. Those descriptions suggest that the, this bird has remarkable flights, and in fact, it does. I was very fortunate to have observed them and captured them on film. I uh, got uh, footage of several different types of flight, and they're all in their own way very interesting. The ivory bill has, uh, it's a very massive woodpecker, one of the most massive in the world. It has relatively narrow wings that are designed for high speed flight. And because of that combination, that causes it to have uh, some unusual flight characteristics. For example, Tanner mentioned that in going from, one, from limb to limb, this bird would have to flap its wings uh, uh, because it's such a massive bird with narrow wings. Whereas a pileated woodpecker can almost float like a butterfly between limbs very effortlessly. And one of the events I captured in, the, in video here in the Pearl River shows such a flight. So there's a, there's a great deal of information at my website, not only on the videos, but also I've done an analysis based on, in the historical accounts, we know a lot about the behaviors of the bird, the fact that they're, they're, um, uh, they're uh, wary of people, uh, they fly long distances from the nest, they're not sort of non-territorial. Uh, for example, with a pileated woodpecker, they, they remain in relatively small territory, so if you find one, it's easy to relocate it. With ivory-billed woodpeckers, it was known as far back as the 1930s that it's difficult to reproduce sightings. If you have a sighting, you may come back to the area and never see the bird again because they fly long distances. Also, the habitat, uh, even, even in the winter, there's very poor visibility in these types of habitats. So, uh, and they're huge. They are, they're tens of square miles, typically, where these birds are, are found, these swamp forests. Several tens of uh, square miles here in the Pearl River Swamp, and they're hard to get into. Um, I spent eight years out here and was very fortunate to have ten sightings. And uh, so I did an analysis based on the habitat and the behaviors of the bird. And uh, that analysis predicts that it should take millions of times a more effort on the average to obtain a clear photo of this bird than a more typical bird of comparable rarity, a bird that has more typical behaviors and habitat. And this is consistent with the history of this bird, which has disappeared uh, for for many years at a time, only to be rediscovered. No one's been able to obtain a clear photo during the past several decades. No one has ever obtained a clear photo without knowing a nest, which is the only, one of the only, really the only reliable place where they would come back uh, to return to. So, um, it, it's an extremely difficult bird to find. And that's one of the reasons that it is a controversial issue because no one has been able to get a clear photo. But as discussed in my lectures, other lectures here and in my papers, conclusive evidence does exist for the, all three of the videos contain, um, show events involving uh, behaviors, field marks, body proportions, flights, etc that can only be explained in terms of the ivory-billed woodpecker. And unfortunately, this issue has been politicized. Uh, there could be jealousy might be a, a factor. Other things, foolishness comes into play quite a bit. 
But if you want to get to the bottom of this, I would recommend considering the, uh, the, the series of sightings that Fitzpatrick's uh, group had in Arkansas, Hill's group had in, in Florida, and the strongest evidence which is contained in the three videos that I obtained. And not only do those videos prove that the bird persisted at least through 2008 when I had my last sighting and got the last video, but they also show remarkable behaviors of this bird, including the only double knock and several types of flight, including the swooping flights that have ever been uh, filmed. So I hope that uh, you'll take a look at all this data and beware that there's a lot of bad information out there.